This video was made possible with the help of Game Toppers. Upgrade your gaming experience with a Game Topper. Hello chaps and chapets. Do you participate or run a gaming group or a gaming club? Yes? Well, you probably know that one of the biggest challenges is when you go to an event or you arrange an event like this is choosing which games on your shelf to put in the bag to, 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 to play with everyone. Now, one of the big challenges that I have is which of these games do I want to put in the bag that I want to play or I want to critique or review uh, do I put in the bag and I can explain in another language. Yes, because I live in France. Um, and one of the games that has been getting a lot of popularity at the moment and we actually played last night is Azul, which is a tile set collection game, strategic placing kind of, um, you know, take what you want, leave the, the rest for the other players and let them fight over the scraps kind of game. Um, and it, as I said, it's been very popular in my gaming group and it's been going there for the past three nights that we've been getting together. And so I thought I'd use this time to, to, to pull it apart and critique it because I can't understand why people like this. I'm not overly keen on it, but what is it about this game that makes it popular? of Azul are simple. You're going to be collecting tiles and getting a set of either one, two, three, four, or five, uh, which will correspond with your player board. And once you've completed it, you'll place that tile on your wall and score points. Now the point scoring is very simple, which is a nice element. If you place a tile out on its own, it's gonna give you one point. If you place a tile next to another tile, either horizontally or vertically, it's gonna give you a point for each tile touching. Uh, and so the more tiles that you collectively put together in lines, horizontal and vertical, will give you more and more points. So there's a kind of like a multiplier there as the game goes on. As you can see from the board, all the tiles are played in, well, placed out in a diagonal line. So no tile is in the same column, no same color tile. And as you can see, there are five colored tiles. So it keeps it simple and refreshing. And as you can see, the colors are based on the azul blue and uh, I don't know, some kind of 70s kind of wallpaper. Now there is a variant on the back of your player board where you actually get to create the wall the way that you want to create it. Uh, again, applying the rules of, you know, you can't place the same color tile in a same in the same column horizontally or vertically, which I haven't played yet, but I can imagine adds a bit of fun. It kind of has that Sudoku feel where you can't put the same numbers in the same columns and you've got to kind of suss out your, your pattern and your style. Uh, to give you the points and I can see this being quite an interesting kind of variation due to the fact that you can all, all players can probably play it at the same speed as they build up in a corner maybe and then start playing out whereas this you know depending on what you pick you might get a tile there and a tile there and you get on around one two three or four points because you're placing these tiles out sporadically and then in the next round they might kind of boost up. But um, yeah, again, it depends on what tiles you get. So how does the game actually play? 
In the middle of the table, you're gonna have a number of these coasters and randomly placed on each of these coasters, depending on the number of players there are, you're gonna place randomly from this lovely sack with Azul written across it, four of these lovely chunky kind of sweet like tiles. Now these tiles from the bag will cycle. So once all the tiles have been played from the bag, any tiles from a discard pile will get put back into the bag. And so there is a kind of equality there where it, the game is equal lib uh, and you can kind of card count the tiles because there's an equal amount of each color tile. And so if you've seen a lot of reds in the first couple of rounds, then you can be sure that there's not gonna be maybe a lot of reds in the third or fourth round, for example. So once these coasters are placed out in the middle of the table, an action is very, very simple. On a player's turn, they can take uh, an assortment of tiles of one color from one of these coasters. All the other tiles from that coaster will be slid into the middle. And this middle section of the table is like a, a giant coaster itself. Because later on in the game, a player may wish to take all of one color tile from the middle of the table. Now, if you're the first player to do so, you're also gonna pick up this first player token. This first player token means that on the next round, you start the round. But there's also a malice to that, a, a penalty, so to speak. I'll get back to that in a minute. So as you can see, the rules are simple. You're basically picking up something that you want and adding it to you, one of your collection columns. Okay, you're not gonna instantly add tiles to your wall straight away, you're gonna to have to wait until all the tiles are gone from the middle of the table and the coasters before you transfer the collections that you've got onto your wall. And these collections need to be complete. So you're gonna be filling in the columns from the left-hand side of the board. Now this is part of the puzzle solving strategy of the game is like what tiles are you going to take and what column are you gonna put them in? Because as I said, you probably might want to score big points straight away and get like a whole room kind of line vertically filled in to give you five points plus four points plus three points plus two points plus one point and your first round so that's 15 points i think if i if I'm, math is no but anywho you might want to do that and that's a great start for you but getting those tiles is a problem because as i said you're collecting these tiles you're adding them to one of the set collection columns and only when that column is filled up so like the line of three if you have three tiles of the same color there you get to add that to the wall at the end of the round if you don't have all three tiles there they stay there in the reserve and you get the chance to fulfill that kind of quota for the next turn which so is kind of not really a a big loss because you've got like a leg up on the next round but it can be a problem later on that may give you minus points so that's something you need to be aware of and whenever you add tiles to a column if you add more than what's actually required this is where the crux and the the kind of nastiness of the game comes through because any tiles that you can't fit in a column, believe me, you can't redistribute them elsewhere. They go into this bottom section where you're gonna get minus points at the end of the game. The more tiles you have at the bottom, the more negative points you're going to score. Remember your first player token? That also goes there. So yeah, you're gonna be first player the next round, but you're gonna at least get minus one point at the end of the round. Um, it, it, sometimes it's a sacrifice worth paying off and that's nice it's knowing when to take a you know take a punch in the gut for the team so to speak and take a couple of tiles just to get minus two points and god forbid minus four points uh for the end of the round but at the end of the day you might be more beneficial because you're actually completing uh, uh, a lot of horizontal and vertical lines giving you mega points that way so you know gaining 10 points and losing three points or two points is not so bad compared to maybe what everyone else is doing at the table and that leads me to what everybody else is doing at the table this is a game where you really really 
really have to look at what other people are doing and not bury yourself into the board. Now, maybe on your first game, you'll, you'll just concentrate and get the gist of the game by just concentrating on your board and not worrying about everyone else once. And, and that's good because, yeah, you, you, you're learning. But you will have to pay attention to what everybody else is doing, what they need, what they don't need, and what they're going to leave for you. Because it is, the game basically revolves around picking up scraps. Um, and worst case scenario, hopefully you're not picking up dog poop from another player, which is gonna turn out to be negative points because that's what can happen. You can get some aggressive players who are constantly aware of everyone else and they will see that you don't need any blue and there's a lot of blue in the middle of the table and there's not much choice in, in things that you can take and you can't take this and you can't take that. They might deliberately take, you know, something on the chin, they might take a punch on the chin just so you take a foot full of dog poo and then you collect those tiles and they go directly into your negative points. So being aware of what other players are doing is always uh, an essential part of the game. And that leads me to the actual how players play. Now you will have players who will just like do their own thing and just concentrate on their board. And luck have it, they will get away with murder and score bucket loads of points because nobody is interfering with them or people are trying to interfere with them but because of the luck of the draw of the tiles what's available and what everyone's taking you know this it's a walk in the park we've had games where people have just done their own thing on their board and everyone's been happy and scored lots of points and then there's games where players play the same but because of the luck of the draw and what people take someone gets stung and that leaves them with a very nasty taste in their I've had that nasty taste. Last night, uh, a new player to the game had that nasty taste. They finished the game with two points, while the winner was up to 65. And I was not far behind with about 20. Yeah, that's a, that's a really strange score spread for a game which is a family game, so to speak. It has family rules. It is quite simple to teach, although there is some kind of confusion over uh, the placement of tiles in the reserve and when they actually go over but after your first game people seem to get the rules down quite easily um, so rules wise the rules are good the rules are interesting the idea is interesting um, but the there's this really kind of you know you can really you can be stung or you can have 10 bowels of crap beaten out of you by the other players, either deliberately or undeliberately, depending on how the game plays. And that for me is kind of like a deciding factor in the game. It's this kind of, your, your game could be good or it could be bad, depending on number one, luck, number two, the other players. So I've waffled on long enough for a very kind of clean, game let's go to the technical review technically this game is a stellar production you have this lovely bag you have these fantastic touchy-feely tiles um, the color you know obviously it's tied in with the theme I'm not too keen on the the, the color palette that's been used uh, but it works for what it is I mean I don't think about the color too much apart from what colors do I need while I'm playing now, like last night, one player was not having fun because they were getting stung with the leftovers, which they didn't need, which they were just chucking in. They had no choice but to chuck into the negative point column. Um, and they were going from round to round, not scoring many points due to the fact that they couldn't complete sets. The good news is this game is not a long game. It will normally last for five rounds. So it's five rounds of taking stuff and then scoring. Uh, before the game ends. The game will end when one player has completed a horizontal line of tiles. Once one player has done that, and that will normally happen quite easily because each round, this only needs one tile to be complete before you can score it. So do that five times, walk in the park. The game is over. So yeah, 30, 40 minute game, perfect. 
at the end of that scoring, uh, there's a bonus scoring. You'll score bonus points if you have completed a line horizontally or vertically. And you'll also get 10 points if you have all five colors, all five of one color, not all five colors, but all of one color filled on your wall, which is a great thing to do. And that's a good way to get lots of points. But as I said, losing points is the bummer. The other components like the player boards, solid, fantastic, big, chunky, thick board, big, th chunky, thick coasters, uh, a box with an insert, which houses everything really nicely, beautiful, a rule book, which explains everything with some really nice diagrams. Um, it's very simple to uh, read it and get the gist of the game straight away, which is fantastic. Uh, bugbear. The smallest bugbear in the universe that I have is with black cubes keeping your score. Okay, you're doing a lot of movement on your board. And again, your tiles are gonna slide as you add new tiles or slide tiles from your reserve over onto your wall. And so the board moves, the tiles move, this moves as well. Sometimes you'll place it and you're not sure if you've put it on the three or the four. And so you're like, have I got three points or four points? That, that's the only bugbear which takes the technicality of this game down to a 9.5 out of 10. Otherwise, stellar components, stellar rules. Uh, what else can I say? So my personal BGG score for this game is a whopping six out of 10. This is an okay game. I will play it occasionally. Um, in fact, my wife loves this game. So when she says, let's play a game, guess what she gets out? This. Um, and I don't say no. That's the one thing that I've learned is don't say no. If someone wants to play a game with you, you say yes. <laughs> if someone asks you, are you a god? You say yes. But anywho, um, yeah, it's an okay game. Um, I admire the mechanics. What I don't like is the fact that a player can be stung by luck or stung by nasty players. And that's not the bad thing. It's, it's, it's the luck thing, I think, which hurts the most. You know, where, you, as I said, normally when we're playing with oldish deers, you know, women of 50, 60 years old, they're not looking at you your board and they're not deliberately trying to screw you over they just want to build the patterns and oh it's nice and just because of the luck of the draw and the luck of what they take and the luck of what's left over even if you try and plan out you know if i take that that's going to leave seven of those there and even if you do that sometimes you will get bitten in the ass because the colors that you want are not coming up or the, the quantities of the colors that you want don't come up and then all of a sudden nobody else wants that color for some strange reason and then you're left with it and then you take the big negative hit um so yeah uh, it's when it's luck it's it's the worst when it's another player deliberately saying well i don't really need the red but if i take these two reds they will have to take the black and there's three blacks and they've got nowhere to put them so they're going to lose four points you know, when players like that, yeah, that, that's that's the fun of the game. And I've had that happen to me. So for me, it's it's this luck factor of, you know, whatever is left over, you know, you get the scraps from the dinner table and whether they're nice or not, are in another thing, whether it's a nice piece of steak that's been left over or whether it's just runner beans, which you make you gag because they're stringy. So yeah, there you go. There's there's the scores. If I combine them together, if I've done it right, you're going to get a 7.75 out of 10 for us all. So that should give you a kind of like a mean average as a critique of the game. I'm not too keen on the game. It's okay, blah, blah, blah. But I admire the product itself, the ease of use getting into it, the, 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 pro, the quality of the product. Um, and so, uh, you know, I, I can't just slag the game off for, for, for not liking it. There's lots of things to like. So have you played as all? What did you think about it? Did you enjoy it? Hmm. Let me know in the comments below. Also, if you've enjoyed this video, please give it a like. 
If you know someone that might appreciate this video or might want to learn about Azul and all its ins and outs, maybe share this video with them. And if you want to check out everything else that I've been doing in the board game world, you can go to boardgameseverybodyshould.com where Guillaume, Arnold and myself write reviews. There's also the Breaking Badger Board Game Babble podcast there. And there's also uh, some board game soundtracks like the new Abyss soundtrack, which is just coming out very, very soon. So uh, thanks for watching. I'll say ciao for now. And remember to please play nicely with each other, even if the game tells you not to. Just sitting at the table next to Felicia would be quite nice. Wouldn't it be good? I got some board games.